got them up to speed. We got what they need. Yeah. You get them evaluated. Because the only thing you're going to get with a label is a prescription. Everybody understand that, right? That's all you want to get. So when a parent tells you, I'm going to get my son evaluated for ADHD, stop him for a minute, him or her, ask them to turn on their common sense, and ask them, do you believe in medication? Because if you don't believe in medication, what do you want the label for? The label is the pathway to drugs. And who's benefiting from all these drugs? The drug companies, Wall Street. Siva Gaidi, Eli Lilly, Abbott Laboratories. These are the mega drug pharmaceutical cartels who make $50 billion off drug and black boys every year. $50 billion is how much these drugs are worth to be. This is about cash. Cash for crazies. And we let our kids get diagnosed as crazy so people can make money off of them. And unfortunately, sometimes we want to make money off our children. I had a young lady at a high school a couple years ago, I'll never forget it, African Center Charter School, Philadelphia. She was diagnosed as retarded in the second grade. And we're going to talk about the definitions for these labels, but I want you to understand. Everybody in here has to become a parent advocate. I want you to walk out here today with something that you can use immediately to help a parent who's trying to protect their child and don't know what to do. I'm going to give you that. A lot of what I'm giving you, I give to principals, I give it to social workers, I give it to parent advocates, I give it to educational lawyers. Okay, so if you take what you get today, you'll be able to help a lot of people in your community. Because I don't live on your block. I don't live in your community. And a lot of phone calls I get, because of my schedule, I'm not able to return them within a timely manner. So I need you to be that advocate for your community. Somebody pops up, they say, look, I got this issue with my son. I want you to be able to do something about it right then and there. Tell them what to do. Empower them. Because so many of our parents feel helpless to do anything about what's going on. We have to empower them with the information and with the strategies. My apology. The job of a psychologist is to do what? Find out why he can't read. Find out why she can't do math. Find out why he can't sit still. It's an investigation, okay? Now, the problem I have with us and our community is sometimes we ask for an investigation when we already know why the kid got the problem. Are y'all with me? Okay? What is your son being tested for special ed when you know you don't make him do homework? What is your daughter doing being tested for special ed when you know her real problem is the fact that she wants to see her father and you don't let her, and so she sits, sits in school daydreaming about how I want to be with my dad? Y'all follow me now? Because guess what? 75% of the kids or more who I test don't have nothing wrong with them. The problem is their parents. Are y'all with me? The problem is the parents, it's not the child, it's the parents, okay? And our self-hate as a race trickles down to our parenting strategies. Our self-hatred as a race trickles down to our parenting strategies. See, you can't hate yourself and love your children. It's impossible. If you need $5 and I ain't got $5 in my pocket, how am I going to give it to you? So if my child needs love and I ain't got nothing for myself, how am I going to give it to him? You see? Now it becomes difficult for some of us to admit the fact that, hey, I may not love my children. Most of us do, I'm sure, but some of us don't, and it comes out in the behavior. It comes out in the behavior. You got a son, he can't see his father. I don't understand that. Because you know what you're doing? You're sowing the seeds of hatred for women. You're sowing the seeds of a psychological disadvantage as a result of not having that paternal love, which can do what? Metamorphosis into homosexuality. You're making them gay. And then when he becomes gay, you want to throw him out the house. You sold that seed. Why is he dating men? Because he's looking for the love of his father he never got. That maternal energy, he's craving it. And he's going to run into an older man who's going to manipulate it into a sexual relationship. I see it all the time. I see it all the time. Or he comes to hate you because you didn't let him see his dad. So now he does what? Generalize the hatred for his mother to all women. I don't want to be with none. He ends up in a homosexual relationship. Same thing works with the girls. They grow up, see their father beating on their mother. This is what a man does to a woman. Then they hear about it next door. They hear about grandma went through it. They draw the conclusion. Wait a minute. Being in love with a man is pain. I want peace, so I'm going to spend my life with a woman. We often sow the seeds of homosexuality in our own homes. Now, there's four reasons for getting a psychological evaluation, people. Number one, to gain information that you don't already know. Stop getting your children tested when you know why they're struggling. And please don't pimp your baby. 
Too many of us are looking for labels to get an SSI check. Social Security supplemental income, and the worse the diagnosis, the bigger the check, right? So if we say they mentally retarded, it's a big check. Autism, big check. Emotional disturbance, big check. So going back to the young lady I said I tested at the African Center Charter School in Philadelphia, diagnosed as retarded in the first and second grade, gets to 12th grade, I evaluate her. What do I find? She's not retarded. Never was, because you can't used to be retarded, okay? <laughs> Everybody understand that, right? You would think that's common sense, but it ain't common. Well, she was retarded for 11 years, she's not. If that doesn't work, okay? I called the mother, I thought the mother would be happy. Your daughter been misdiagnosed. You gotta write the compensatory ad, you can sue, get your lawyer, get some money out of this, put it in the trust fund for college. She said, who is you to tell me my daughter ain't retarded? That's what she told me. Black woman, who are you to tell me my daughter ain't retarded? She's been retarded for 11 years, and I'm supposed to believe that because you did this eval this one time, that she ain't? I said, that's absolutely right. If you want, you can come in. I'll retest it in front of your face. There's nothing wrong with your daughter's cognitive function. Nothing wrong with her intellectual ability whatsoever. I'm taking the label off. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. So the principal came in. Brother Umar, what are we going to do? The mom upset. I said, what are we going to do? She's coming out of special education. That's what we're going to do. If the mom got a problem with it, she can go to due process. I'm going to come to due process with my psyche valve and show the due process here and officer how ain't nothing wrong with this kid. She should have never been in special ed. The problem is what? The mom money get cut the minute I take the label off. <laughs> Who else money get cut? The school. school. Hey. Whenever I put one of your children in special ed, if I say he got a learning disability, she's autistic, emotional disturbance, Okay, a specific learning disability. The school gets what? On average, approximately $10,000 extra. He's $10,000. I got another 10 that's 20. I got 30. I got $40,000 out of four kids. Now, you know, in most schools in your neighborhood, there's more than four kids in special ed. So, what you do is you add up all the kids in special education and times it by $10,000. And you see how much extra. That's a rule of thumb. A special ed child is worth what? twice as much as a regular child. That young man is in regular ed. Depending on whatever the per pupil expenditure is for Goldsboro City Schools, let's say it's 9,000. He's 9,000. She got put in special ed yesterday, which we know ain't gonna happen, princess. But she got put in special ed yesterday. She's what? 18,000. Y'all see that? The special ed kids are double. So let me ask you a question. If I'm a special ed teacher, I'm the learning support teacher, and all you are in my class, right? Now the psychologist comes and I'm retesting everybody. Ain't nothing wrong with him. Ain't nothing wrong with him. Ain't nothing wrong with this kid. Ain't nothing wrong with her. Start pulling him out. I start getting worried as the teacher. We know why the school is worried. They don't get that 10 grand. We know why the parent is worried. They don't get that SSI. Now the teacher is worried. Why? Because if too many children are exited from special ed, the principal, when he starts planning for his budget for next year, he says, whoa, I don't need a full-time teacher. We can hire a part-time or bring an itinerary, or better yet, divide those kids up amongst the other remaining special ed classes we got. That's one less salary we got to pay. We're sorry, you're laid off. So guess what the teacher does? The teacher lies and says he still needs special ed. She still needs. Why? Because I like the school I'm in. I like the fact that I ain't got to do nothing here. I like the fact that the black parents of the special ed kids in my classroom never come up here to check on their children. When I call them to come to an IEP meeting, I got to track them down in the streets. This is a disgrace for white folks to have to track down black folks so you can come to a meeting for your child who you let get misdiagnosed with a made up label. They're turning black people to a permanent underclass and they're doing it without permission. You can't put a kid in special ed without parent permission. You can't do it. And then you go run into the ADHD man, right? Clinical psychologist. Now, ADHD is not special ed, right? ADHD is not school psychology. ADHD is clinical. What's the difference? School psychology is special education and only special ed. There's 13 labels. We're going to get to that in a minute. We're going to get to that in a minute. There's 13. I want, I want you to see this in your mind. School psychology, clinical psychology. I happen to be trained in both, right? School psychology is special ed. 13 labels. This is clinical psychology. American Psychiatric Association. How many labels? More than 400. Y'all got me? 13 for school psychology. 
which is special ed, more than 400 for clinical. ADHD is a what? Clinical disorder. ADHD is not one of the 13 special ed labels. So you're saying, wait a second. If ADHD is not a special ed label, why do teachers keep wanting me to get my son tested for ADHD? So you can put him on some drugs. Now, can a child end up in special ed for ADHD? Now remember, ADHD is not a label. Not a special ed label, it's clinical. You get diagnosed outside the school, y'all got it. But, if the parent tells the school that I took Umar to the clinical psychologist downtown, community hospital, he said he got ADHD. The diagnosis was made outside of the school. But because ADHD is a psychiatric disorder, which means it is medical, right? Everything in here is medical, because psychiatry is a branch of medicine. There's a special ed label called, and you'll see all 13 in a minute, other health impairment. Any medical problem that adversely affects a child's performance, they can get special ed for. So even though ADHD is not a special ed label, if the parent brings that clinical report to the school, they can use it to put the kid in special ed. Are y'all with me? Which brings me to my next point. T stop telling the school things that they don't need to know. Stop telling the school things that they don't need to know. Parents call me all the time. Dr. Umar, my son was diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder. What am I going to do? I don't want the school to get a hold of that. They're going to try to put him in special ed or send him to a discipline school. What should I do? What should you do? Keep your mouth shut. There's a law called what? FERPA. For those of y'all taking notes, you want to write down FERPA. F-E-R-P-A. F-E-R-P-A. Family, Educational Rights, and Privacy Act. Family, Educational Rights, and Privacy Act of 1974. Why do you need to know for it? Because if I am the school psychologist or the clinical psychologist and I evaluate your child and I give that report to anybody without your permission, I just violated FERPA. FERPA is school confidentiality. It's federal, it applies to all 50 states and territories. So the first time somebody talked about the teacher gave me the report or the, I called the hospital and they faxed it over. Whoa, whoa! You can't do anything without parent signature. I can't even test one of them babies without parent signature. So the first time somebody come to you talking about we got your child's information from somebody from an agency downtown, wait a minute, y'all just bypass me. They do it to black people all the time. Did y'all hear me? They do it to black people all the time because we don't know the law. We don't know educational law. So now you know that. What else, what else is FERPA beneficial for? FERPA gives you the right to request a full copy of your child's student record. Everything. Discipline, special ed, regular ed, people pocket. You have, a, you have a right to a full copy. You might have to pay for the copies. It's only like 10, 20 bucks. But you have a right to a full copy. Why is that important for you? Because educators put stuff in your children's records every day and you don't know what's in there. So when you go to transfer your child to a certain school, you get rejected and you're like, wait a minute, why did my child get it? They say, well, we think your child is a problem. You say, what for? They've never been suspended. Nah, but they got what? 50 write-ups in there. 50 different write-ups with language that makes it look like your child was worse than what they were. Are y'all with me? The language that they use. People read it and whoa, he threatened the teacher. We don't want nobody like that in our school. But you find out he didn't threaten the teacher. He threatened the teacher by saying, I'm going to tell my mother or father. Y'all see? So you got to know what's in your child's record. Always get a copy of the record before you are about to transfer that kid to another school, especially if it's going to be a special admit school, a place where they choose who comes and goes, because what's in that record can be used against your child. Now, if there's something in your child's record that you don't agree with, what rights do you have? You read the record, you get a copy, like, wait a minute. Look at this writer. They make it look like my son came in there about to shoot everybody. You do what? You write a letter to the superintendent and to the chair of the local school board of education, and you tell them that this information in your child's record that you believe will be damaging to their character and subsequent placement in other schools, and you're requesting a hearing to discuss removal of that documentation. Are y'all with me? You have a right to get it taken out. And every school board in America has an officer whose job is to hear your argument as to why that piece of paper should be taken out and it can be taken out. That's another law we don't know about. Okay? Let me give you a third law you need. So we did FERPA, okay, confidentiality. FERPA, copy of your child's record. Okay? Now let's talk about IEE. I want you to write down I, 
for independent E, educational, and another E, evaluation. What is an independent educational evaluation? Let me tell you what it is. I evaluate princess over here. Um, excuse me. White psychologist or Negro evaluates princess. They say she's mildly mentally retarded. Mom and pop said, no way. What rights do you have? The school psychologist said your child is retarded or learning disabled, emotionally disturbed. You don't agree. In the United States of America, you have a right to an independent educational evaluation. What is that? That's when you go and find your own school psychologist. You get your own. They reevaluate your child. And who gets the bill? The school. I do them every day. Y'all heard me, right? I do them every day. Most black parents don't know. They think when a child gets stamped with a label, they stuck. Ain't nothing I can do. I gotta try to fight it some way, but I. No! You got a right to say, you know what? I don't agree with this. I want an independent. You go get your psychologist. They test, they might say this is wrong. So if the psychologist says one thing and your independent psychologist says something else, which report do we go by? The one you choose. You see that? That's another law. So what y'all need to do is find a black school psychologist in North Carolina, if there's any. If it ain't, if any of y'all work or know someone who works in the State Department of Education, I can send my paperwork in, it's just transfer, and then that way I can come down and do an independent if necessary. Okay? That's how that works. But no matter what, you get my business card on the table over there, my brother, I me. Mean. So that way, if you ever got an issue, you email me or you fax me the report. My fax number's on you fax. Hey, Dr. Umar, they said my kid is emotionally disturbed. Can you look at this? My phone number, bang, bang, bang. My son name is so-and-so. I faxed it to you. Okay, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to call you. We're going to go through it. And I'm either going to tell you I agree that the way in which they came up with the diagnosis was correct. Or, this is a bunch of crap. And you need to request the IEA. Okay? So you can always call on me for advice, anything with education. And if your child is in special education, and you believe they need special education, because some of our children do have problems. Autism is real. Moderate mental retardation is real. Mild mental retardation is a joke, but moderate, severe, profound, we all know folks who are mentally retarded. We know people who are autistic. That's real. So you do need special education, although the system needs to be torn down and pre-built. If your child is in special ed, you need to know what? A special ed child cannot be suspended more than 10 days out of the school year. Did y'all hear what I said? There's 180 days in public and charter school. They cannot be suspended more than 10. So if your child is in, is in special ed, I want you to use it to protect the baby. Okay? If, if you're going to give them the label, use it to help the child. No more than 10 days. And you better keep track of them days yourself. You say, why do I got to keep track? They always put it in the computer. No, they don't. I work with principals. Black, white, and purple, I'm going to tell you what they do. Okay? They lie on purpose to cover their behinds. Are y'all with me? Okay? This is what they'll do. She got suspended 20 times last year. We go on the computer, it's only five. How did that happen? They wasn't logging them in. Why? Because if she's special ed, they know she can't go past 10. Okay? And if she's regular ed, you can't suspend more than 10 days at once. Write that down. If you special ed, no more than 10 total. Special ed, no more than 10 total for the whole school year. Regular ed, they can be suspended more than 10 days total, but no more than 10 days at one time. Do y'all follow me? So, principal call you and say, Raheem suspended for 10 days. Okay? He can do 10. Can he say Raheem suspended for 11? No. Anything past 10 is what? Exposure. In order for the school to expel your child, they have to do what? Give you a right to due process hearing. What is that? That's when you come downtown to the local school board meeting, and they sitting up here, y'all know how it is, it looks just like this, and you come up there and you say, I don't think my son should be expelled. Why? Because when he pushed the teacher, it was in reaction to the teacher pushing him, it was provoked, there's children in the classroom whose parents are willing to have them testify, they came with me today. All my son did was react, teachers, my son was wrong, he should not have put his hands on his teacher, but I, the teacher was also wrong, because just like students can't touch teachers, 
It's illegal for teachers to touch students. So if you want to expel my son, what are you going to do to the white woman who put her, put her hands on him first? Y'all see that? You always exercise your due process. You always exercise your due process. Very important. Okay? The research tells us what? Children from low-income and single-parent households, black children from low-income and single-parent households, are suspended twice as much, are suspended twice as much for the same crimes as middle and upper class black kids and as white kids. Y'all hear that? So you see there's a parallel between school discipline and prison procedure. Y'all see that? School discipline and prison procedure. In fact, public school in America for most of our boys is nothing more than a waiting room for jail. Is nothing more than a waiting room for jail. And the sickness about the miseducation of black children is the fact that the black community does not seem to really be upset. Only one out of every four black boys is graduating from high school, but there's no upswell. Only three out of every 100 black baby boy infants born in the world, in America, will ever see the inside of a college. Three percent, but you don't hear nothing. Only about half of our girls are given a diploma but you don't hear nothing. Which means what? Black parents have no problem with their children being miseducated. That's right. School board meeting, we don't show up. Back to school night, y'all not there. Not you individually here, but in general, we don't show. So when the white folks see that these black parents don't care, they don't care enough to show up, we can do anything we want with these kids. Special letter. In fact, I had a case in one school district Pennsylvania, they didn't even ask the parents' permission to test their child for special ed, which was illegal. You got to get the signature. They just put the kid in special ed. When did the parent find out? Almost a year later. I get some phone call. Can they put my kid in special ed without my permission? No. That's what they did. Okay. I got a lawyer for you. Call this lawyer. We're going to get on it. But here's my question to you. Why did it take you 10 months to find out? Are y'all with me? Why did it take you 10 months to find out? And then another problem we got in the community is what? Homework. We don't do homework. How do you perfect a skill if you don't practice? If your son want to be a good quarterback, he got to practice. A good jump shooter, he got to practice. Your daughter want to be a track star, she got to practice. But when it comes to reading, writing, and math, we don't think we need to practice. And so when I travel the country, people always ask me questions. Are black children intellectually inferior to white children and Asians? Why do you ask? Because we look at the SAT scores and y'all consistently behind the other two groups. We look at the IQ test scores and y'all consistently behind the other two groups. We look at academic achievement and y'all consistently behind the other two groups. Maybe the population control junkies are right. Maybe Bill Gates and the Council of Foreign Relations are correct. Maybe John D. Rockefeller was correct when they said that black folks should just be exterminated because they're really useless. Because look, y'all can't even keep them. Two reasons why our children are constantly doing less well than others. And it's not all black children. You have black children that outperform the others. What do they have in common? Two reasons why our kids' test scores are consistently 15 points below. You keep hearing about the 15 point gap, race gap. Number one, all tests are what? Designed by and in the interest of middle class white people. Are y'all with me? So you testing a poor black kid off a middle class white test made by middle class white people for middle class white kids. Of course you're going to do better because it was made for you. If I make a test for my children, guess what? They will be up 15 points. That's number one. Number two, what's the other reason? The other reason is the average Asian child spends 12 to 15 hours a week studying outside of school the average white kid spends 8 to 12 hours a week studying outside of school, middle class. And the average Negro baby, because he's supposed to be going to the NFL, NBA, she's supposed to be the next Beyonce, okay, some Negro stuff. We only spend 45 minutes a week doing homework outside of school. Did y'all hear that? How do you want to compete with 15 hours for the Asian, 12 hours for the white boy, with 45 minutes? And you know half that 45 minutes is spent in the refrigerator. <laughs> Y'all see? So we have a culture, okay, of academic disenfranchisement 
as a result of the lack of value we place in our children's learning. For example, in most black inner city school districts, you can be failed in two major subjects and still be on a football team. All y'all saw Coach Carter, right? True story, Samuel L. Jackson, right? What did he do? They stopped failing, he locked the gym. They threw windows through his business, spit on his car, the school board fired him, but hold tight, hold tight. Where did he get his greatest source of opposition? Black parents. Am I wrong? What did the one mother say? Basketball is all these boys got. And you know what did Samuel L. Jackson say? That's a problem. Why did he say that? Because most of them ain't going pro. That's possible. How many high school athletes end up professional? One percent. Did y'all notice that love? One percent that's black, white, that's soccer, baseball, football, back. only 1% of our athletes are going to go pro. And that 1%, you're dealing with whites too. So guess what? It ain't even 1% of all black kids. So if you got your son growing up thinking you're going to be the next LeBron James or Michael Vick, that's not a good look. I'm not saying kill your son's dream, but he should have a what? Fall black plan. What's plan B? If you don't make it, you need a plan B. Because I'm getting sick and tired of picking up the newspaper once a year and I know you do too, with some former standout athlete in Goldsboro was just arrested for robbing the stopping gun. You know what I'm talking about, right? Everybody said he was the next one, but he didn't quite make it. And because there was no plan B, now he's a sticker boss. It happens in Philadelphia all the time. False dreams. What I don't understand is why we have our children so hooked on becoming athletes when the truth of the matter is what? The men who own those teams who pay them their paychecks, most of them went to college. Don't run up and down the football field, no surgeries, no drugs for pain, no Novocaine, none of that! But we never talk to our children about owning their own team. You notice that? Why can't they be an owner of an NFL team? You ain't got one black owner of an NFL team. And they talking about sports as integrated. Look at basketball, Michael Jordan is the only one. And he bought that business from who? Bob Johnson who sold BET to Viacom in 2000 for two billion. But Bob Johnson sold BET to Viacom, why? Because he wanted to open up a black travel agency. He said, look at all the money my people are spending to go on vacation, escape racism. Look at the money they're spending to escape racism. So guess what, I want to get a chunk of that. So I'm gonna give up, I'm gonna give off this uh, TV thing because I ain't doing nothing anyway but promoting filth. So let me go ahead and you know, uh, get rid of that pick up some travel. The white folks heard about that. They said, who do you think he is? Black folks don't fly no planes. So the next thing you know, Hollywood came out with a movie, Soul Plane. Did y'all see it? Pure buffoonery. Negroes going great. Monique was in there. Y'all saw him. Kevin Hart acting a fool. They said, y'all not getting no plane. Y'all gonna put rims on the airplane. <laughs> They do, they do, they trivialize everything we do. They trivialize everything we do. So white folks, I'm not getting no plane. They smoking weed up in the cockpit. And somebody got barbecue out back. How you barbecue on? You see? So what did they do to Bob Johnson? They gave him a basketball. They say Negroes don't fly planes, but you can go and be the owner of the Charlotte Bobcats. So they gave him that. He started losing money. He passed it off to Michael Jordan. Maybe he'll do something with it. Take Oprah Winfrey. Oprah, the biggest name in TV history made trillions of dollars for that network she was on. All of a sudden, she decides, I'm gonna get this up, stop being a slave, I made enough money, I'm gonna start my own network, I'm gonna call it the old network. So she got the old network right now, and it's doing what? Terribly. The white folks are sabotaging Oprah, why would you do that when she made you trillions? Because in America, black people are not allowed to be captains of capitalism. There's certain fields that they will never let us in. No matter how much you've done for them, they'll never let you in. This speculation that Bill Cosby's son was murdered because he was trying to buy, what, NBC or CBS? And they said they murdered his son to sit him down. I don't know how true that is, okay? But I don't doubt it at all because there's certain fields they don't let black folk in. Now, can we get in them? Sure, if we do what? Organize. The biggest problem in the black community is there's no organization. 
When we move out, we move out as one person or a small clique. Do y'all feel me? We go on a boycott, there's five people out there walking around like somebody paying you attention. Take the brother who was just assassinated. Uh, Georgia, what was his name? Troy Davis. Everybody said, well, black people was on the news, they was on the radio, they was out there screaming and shouting and protesting. They killed him anyway. Well, guess what? The reason they killed Troy Davis is because they knew that there would be no backlash from you. That's why they killed Troy Davis. Okay? Y'all saw what happened over in London when the police attacked that brother or killed that brother? They rioted over there. You'll never see that in America. Not again. Because in a post-civil rights era, you have been made totally docile, like a snake raised in a tank. You are totally, totally afraid of your oppressor. Totally afraid! And part of that is the responsibility of black leadership, okay, because most of them are a bunch of pimps, and they've really done nothing significant since Dr. King's assassination. And as a result of that, you've gotten lazy because black leadership have gotten lazy. Okay, you ain't got one leader right now who's really gonna sacrifice anything on your behalf. Why? They're too rich. Black leaders are millionaires. Every last one, be they nationalists or integrationists, they're all pimps. Umar Johnson said it, tell me more. Okay, they're pimps. They've been pimping you, they're telling you what you already know, and you passing the buck. Okay? First of all, we don't need a leader. That's over. Whenever you raise up a leader, he either does what? Gets killed or gets compromised. Okay? Al Sharp, good example, right? Totally prostituted himself in front of Barack Obama. How are you going to be a leader of black people and make yourself a stool pigeon of a United States president? I don't give you black or white. You can never do that. Okay? Dr. King would have never done that. You don't do that. You talked about Jesse, you became Jesse. You see? So what we need is leadership. We need a collective, a conglomerate of leaders, okay, who function as a single mind. But it must be more than one. If it's more than one, it doesn't matter what heads you're going to cut off, there's still 14 more. And that's the way we got to function. No more black man on the shining horse coming to save black people. We got to get rid of that. I want to show you the 13. Okay, here we go. This is special ed right here. These are the 13 labels. These are the 13 labels. We're going to go through them, but I need you to understand what they are. Alphabet suit. The first one is mental retardation. That's a very controversial label. Why is mental retardation controversial? Because during Reconstruction, the Garvey movement, and the Civil Rights era, Black people were deliberately diagnosed as retarded so they could be denied jobs, decent living, and so that they could also be institutionalized. Did y'all hear what I said? Mental retardation was a weapon. Also, 38 United States forbade you from getting married or having children if you were mentally retarded. So they deliberately said black people were retarded so you couldn't get married or have children. That's 38 out of the 50 states had that law on the books until the Civil Rights Bill. You've been told that Adolf Hitler came up with eugenics? No, he did not. He borrowed it from America. Did y'all hear me? Adolf Hitler borrowed it. If you don't believe me, read his autobiography. He tells you that his ideas came straight from America. America was the first eugenics, and they're still in it right now. Did you know that the word special education, special education, the concept, is a eugenics concept? Did you know that? Let me tell you what eugenics means. Eugenics is a word that means good stock. It was coined by a white man by the name of Francis Galton. He was the father of individual psychology, cousin to Charles Darwin, another racist. And he said, what? That black people are intellectually inferior to whites, and genetically. And if we want to protect our gene pool, we got to do what? Eliminate them and selectively breed within our own. That's where the whole Hitler idea came from. The blonde hair, blue eye, Anglo-Saxon. You see? So eugenics is a child of psychology. And special education is one of its children. A black boy in America is four times as likely as a white boy to be diagnosed as retarded. Wait a minute now. My son is four times as likely to be diagnosed as retarded than a white boy? Now let's look at the flip. A black boy is four times less likely to be diagnosed as gifted. How do you explain that? I'm four times as retarded and four times less intelligent. Look at that, y'all. So either black boys are born genetically inferior or there's something wrong with the system. Y'all see that? The system. 
And here's another thing we got to stop doing politically, black people. We are allowing people to make us think that the victim created their own problem. Stop doing that. The victim is responsible for solving their problems, yes, but don't blame the victim for creating it. The system does that. And you get a lot of black people who are politically immature and unintelligent, okay? And whenever a black person is politically immature, you always tend to do what? Blame yourself for things you have no control of. You gotta stop doing that. The miseducation system is gonna attack a black boy whether he comes from a one-parent household or two. The system is gonna attack a black boy whether his parents make him do homework or not. Are y'all with me? So we gotta stop saying, well, maybe something wrong with this parent. Maybe something, no, it's the system. I work in the suburban schools, the ghetto schools, private, parochial, charter, public, and wherever I'm at, no matter what type of home our boys come from, they catch hell. Stop blaming the boys, it's the system. And here's my question. 93% of all teachers in America are white women. If 93% of all teachers in America are white women, how in the hell do we expect our boys to be able to learn anything? And now you see why only one out of four gets a diploma. Or you mean to tell me that the same race that once legalized their humanity is supposed to make sure that they're able to compete with their own children mm. on an economic level? Mm. Is that, first of all, the white woman has a natural conflict of interest. She has her racial beliefs about the black boy, but her job says he can learn despite all that. That's a conflict of interest. So the fault is not our children, but it's ours. Why we keep sending them there? And then we wonder why they drop out. Why do you think? Ain't no boy going to keep being mistreated and psychologically castrated. And how soon do they start emotionally torturing our sons? Preschool. I know at least five boys who've been expelled from preschool. I know another two dozen have been expelled from kindergarten. What can a five-year-old do to get expelled from the school district? No weapons, no nothing. Expelled for misbehavior. And we tolerate that kind of stuff. You see, if your school board is not elected, you need to push for a change in the law so the school board gets elected. If your school board is elected, then some of y'all in here need to run. Some of y'all in here need to run. You need that representation. Is that going to solve the problem? No, because we already know what the solution is. Our own damn schools. Ain't nothing else going to work. But in the meantime, while our children are in there, some of y'all got to be at that table to do what? Influence policy. You can't influence policy being on the sidelines. You got to go to the school board meetings. They once a month. When the last time y'all been? When the last time y'all been? The white folks are there. And then you wonder why the white kids got all the money coming from the school district because their parents go to the meetings. We don't know. You can't say you care about your child and not go to the local school board meetings because what? The local school board is the decision maker. The principal don't make no decisions. All the principal can do is recommend to the school board. The superintendent makes some decisions, but who hires the superintendent? The school board. That's who you should be dealing with. Whenever you got a problem with your child, your letter go to the superintendent and to the chair of the school board. And if you want, write a letter to every member of the school board, because they make decisions. Principal can't fire a teacher. I was offered a job as a principal this year, school district outside of Philly. A lot of needs. I was going to take it. I said, you know what? I'm getting sick and tired of y'all saying that these black kids can't learn, don't want to learn. I'll turn the school around one year. It'll be one of the highest performing schools in the state of Pennsylvania, black, white, and purple. I said, I just got one request. I said, what's that? If a teacher ain't teaching, they got to go. If I can't control who's teaching my children, I can't control improvement. I got five white teachers in there who don't give a damn about these black kids. They've been teaching for 30 years. They need to retire, but they're trying to max out on the retirement money. So they're coming to work doing nothing, and y'all know it. And y'all want me to go in there? I'm going to get into it with them the first day. I'm going to get in their world and let them know, you want to teach these kids or you want to get the hell out of my building? And then y'all going to be asking for my resignation. Y'all feel me on that? You're not going to set me up to fail like you do so many black principals across the country who do care, but who what? Handcuffed. 
Because every public school in America has a what? White teacher mafia. I know what I'm talking about, that's why y'all laugh. I don't care what school it is. Take me to a school right now in Goldsboro. There's a white teacher mafia. Who's the white teacher mafia? Three to five white teachers. Some of them been there before your mom been to school. And they run the whole scene. They decide who will be the principal. If they don't like the principal, they can get him out in one month. If they don't like a certain parent, they can get you excluded from coming into the school. If they don't like a child, they'll get them kicked out. Y'all know who I'm talking about. And the crazy thing about the white teacher mafia is what? They do no work themselves. Are y'all with me? Soon when the principal come in, they study him to see if you're going to get down with, our, with what we about, our agenda, because it ain't going to be your agenda. And why do the principals end up giving in to the white teacher mafia? Because the principal's union is a whole lot smaller than the teacher's union. Are y'all with me? So the teachers pick up the phone and say, we got Dr. Umar Johnson in here. Thank you, Joe Clark. He got to go. I got two more years of retirement, and I'm not going to be listening to these young like I tell you what to do. OK? I'm Anglo-Saxon. Well, I ain't retired. Y'all feel me? And guess what the union going to do? They're going to call the superintendent. Did you hire somebody named Dr. Umar? Yeah, he's a good. Well, the teachers are complaining about him. I don't think it's a good fit. Then they're going to come to me. I'm going to say the problem is they're not fitting into the system. Get rid of them. We can't do that. She's a master teacher. She has three master's degrees. She's been on the job for 35 years. She's won National Teacher of the Year uh, uh, award three times in a row. I don't give a ish. Get him out, or I got the wall. So soon when I told them, give me control of the school, they start backing up. You know what they told me? If they don't teach, I want you to write them up. And if you keep writing them up long enough, we'll get rid of them. No, you won't. Let me tell you what you're going to do. If I write them up enough, you want to send them to another school so they can miseducate some other black children. I don't want them miseducating no black children. Get them out the district. The problem is what, y'all? We have allowed the teacher unions to amass so much power in this country that they have set up a situation where public school teachers will hardly ever, 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 ever get fired for anything. Did y'all hear what I said? The only way a public school teacher gets fired in America is if she, what, puts her hands on a student or does something ridiculous like some of them are liaisoning with their students. Y'all follow me? But anything short of that, you don't get fired. Isn't it amazing how you can know that a teacher can't teach and they still keep their job? Mm -hmm. When does a teacher get tenured? After three years. In most school districts, three, definitely after five. You've been on the job five years, you will be a teacher until you decide to retire. That's, right. That's why when people come to me and talk, we got to have mercy on the teachers. They're so poorly paid. I said, really? <laughs> when the last time you found one who got fired? I know doctors who lost their license. I know lawyers who've been this far. I know psychologists who lost their license. I know people get fired every day. Give me a teacher who lost their job. Give me one. Well, I know some who've been reassigned. I didn't ask you that. Reassign me, you still get a check. Show me one who's been fired. So when they start getting fired for not being able to do their job, I start feeling sympathy. And I'm not talking about my black teachers who care, because I know a lot of black teachers who care, and they get mistreated by their principals, because they don't you know, accept that nonsense. I, and I even know some white teachers who can teach. I ain't going to lie to you. I've been in some buildings where the white teachers did a better job than the black ones, because they had that post-traumatic slavery thing going on. So they was worse than the white teachers. So I'm not going to say that they can't teach. I'm saying they're not likely to. Are y'all with me? They're not likely to, which is why we got to build our own schools. And there's six subjects that every black child needs. There ain't no school in America yet. That's why we can build my school. I don't know, public school, charter school, parochial school, private school, teaches black children agricultural science. Hands-on agricultural science. Not a book, but out there on your knees with some gloves on, putting some seeds and some fertilizer and some doo-doo on the crops. Are y'all with me? Black folk can't grow our own food no more. What happened to the lessons of Dr. George Washington Carr? What happened to them lessons? If the Chinese store or the supermarket closed down, how would we eat? Man. Government got most of the agricultural companies doing what? Putting in uh, uh, the GMO, genetically modified organism. So now you eating apples with no nutritional content. You eating you eating uh, grapes, no nutritional content. You think you eating healthy? I read an article not too long ago. They said that when you feed mice GMO fruits and vegetables, they die within a month. And this is what they're giving to us, y'all. Killing using food as a weapon. And then they're telling you the reason why 
in Somalia, you got hundreds of thousands of black people dying, it's because there ain't enough food going around. That's a lot. Did you know that there's enough food grown in the world to make everybody on earth obese? There's no reason for nobody to be starving, but they use food as a weapon. So mental retardation, what's the secret about MR? Whenever you get a report saying your child or another child is mentally retarded, I want you to check for two things. First thing, did they use a brief intelligence test? There's some intelligence tests that are called brief, like Wechsler abbreviated scale of intelligence. Kaufman brief intelligence test. If you're going to diagnose a major classification like mental retardation, how the hell are you going to use a 20 minute IQ test? Are y'all with me? If you ever see the word brief, you give it back and say, I want a full cognitive assessment. I want a full IQ test. Black kids are being misdiagnosed because the lazy ass psychologists are using 20 minute IQ assessments. That's number one. What's the second thing you got to look for? You got to look to see whether or not the IQ score was below 70. You can't get diagnosed as retarded unless the IQ score is below 70. What else? You need to make sure that there's some evidence on the report that the child is impaired in some major life functioning area. In other words, I cannot say you're retarded just because the score is below 70. The score must be below 70, and in addition to that, what do I have to find? Proof that that young lady can't communicate as well as other kids at age, can't socialize as well as other kids at age, can't take care of herself, self-help, and daily living as well as other kids at age. In other words, if the only thing she got is an IQ score below 70, but she can function just as well as the young man sitting next to her, next to her and I see no difference, then she ain't retarded. Where did that law come from? That law came from black and Hispanic kids being diagnosed as retarded with these white races IQ tests that we use. And people took it in the court. And they said, these kids over here are retarded and nothing's wrong with them. In fact, they're smarter than the other ones. How is that? Because do you know that the IQ tests, all of the IQ tests that we use, were designed by who? White racist eugenicists. Did you hear what I said? Stanford Binet, racist. Uh, David Wechsler Intelligence Scale, racist. Where does the concept of IQ come from, black people? The concept of IQ comes from Hitler's Germany. Did y'all hear what I just said? Hitler's Germany, white man by the name of Willem Stern, 1913, 1914, around the same time Marcus Garvey started the UNIA. He came up with an IQ, intelligence quotient. He said you could put a number on how smart you are. This was all being done to do what? Exterminate what Hitler called useless eaters. Blacks, Jews, and anybody else who didn't fit the Anglo-Saxon way. So when your child is 15 points below a white kid, why are you wondering why? When it being tested on the test that was used to do it, exterminate entire groups of people. Did you know that the black child's IQ score goes down as they go up in grade? Did y'all hear that? A black child's IQ score from kindergarten to 12th grade goes down as they go up. Who can explain that nonsense? <laughs> How am I getting dumber the more I get educated? If I'm getting dumber the more I get educated, then that mean I'm being educated to be dumb. Specific learning disability. This is the number one most diagnosed special ed lady. Most kids sent to special ed are sent for this. In 1963 in Chicago, Illinois, a white psychologist came up with something called a learning disability. I want you to listen to the definition. The failure on part of a child with normal intelligence to learn a scholastic skill. The failure on part of a child with normal intelligence to learn a scholastic skill. The failure on part of a child on the part of a child with normal intelligence to learn a scholastic skill. Who can tell me what's wrong with that definition? Where is the contradiction? If the intelligent, if her intelligence is normal, how can it be possible that she can't learn how to read? How can it be possible she can't learn how to do her math? Are y'all with me? It's impossible. Wait a second. Maybe it's not a learning disability. 
Maybe it's a teaching disability. The problem is, whenever something goes wrong in the school, we always bring our, blame our children. We never blame the teacher. You notice that? Whenever you go to a meeting, who in here has ever been to a meeting for a child where somebody said, maybe the teacher is just not a good instructor? I've never heard it. I'm, the, I'm an ad specialist. I've never heard it once, y'all. You see? Everybody looks to who? The kid. Don't nobody consider the instructor. If I'm a therapist and this young lady is dealing with depression, if she ain't making progress in treatment, what you looking at her for? I'm the therapist. I'm the one trained to take her from where she is to where she has to be. A teacher is the same way. But as my colleague Joanza Kajufu says, he says, some teachers teach children and other teachers teach subjects. Did you hear what I just said? You got teachers who come in and say, I ain't got nothing to do with her special needs. I ain't got nothing to do with that, with what he bringing to the table. I ain't got nothing to do with them. I teach math. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Give a damn about the kids they teach it. This ain't college. In college, you can do that. The children got to catch up in college. This grade school, you're supposed to be able to impart the lesson to the child. Let me tell you how. Through what mechanism our children are not learning in school? Anybody ever heard of the lesson plan? <laughs> Have you ever seen your child's teacher's trifling ass lesson plans? <laughs> you know they use the same ones from last year yeah. and photocopy and change the date. Yeah. And then when you look at the lesson plan, you're like, I don't even understand the lesson. <laughs> the art of teaching is doing what? Taking the curriculum and coming up with a way to make it digestible to the child. And that is done through the lesson plan. But I know principals who don't even check lesson plan. I know some schools where the teachers don't even have to do a lesson plan. Hold up. This is 180 days of school. What grade you in, princess? She's in the fourth grade, which is a transition year. That's when most of our boys start checking out psychologically, right? Psychological dropout precedes physical dropout. So if your son dropped out of high school in the ninth grade, that tells me he psychologically dropped off around the fifth. So I need to know from you, mom and dad, uncle, auntie, big brother, big sister, why you just finding out he clocked out mentally until he clocked out physically. So anyway, she's in the fourth grade. If I'm her teacher and I ain't got to do lesson plans, what goal, what strategy, what vision am I using to make sure she's ready for fifth grade at the end of the year? Because if she don't master the fourth grade curriculum, do you know what the fifth grade teacher is going to say? Learning disability. Put her in special ed. Learning disability. Let me tell you the real reason why our children are in special ed. There's a 14th lady that I made up. These are the 13th officials. Guess what the 14th is? A, B, T. They ain't been taught. Does everybody understand? So the next time somebody call you to the school talking about, we want to test Raheem, we think he got a reading disability, I already diagnosed my son. You're, you're not, a, I don't have to. Guess what's wrong with my son? He ain't been taught. What do you mean? He's in the fourth grade, right? Who was his teacher in third grade? Okay. She called out 25% of the school year. She was on maternity leave the last four months, they had about six or seven substitutes in there who didn't know their left hand from their right hand. The second grade teacher suspended my son so much that he was out of class more than he was in it. You can't learn unless you're there. Are y'all with me? First grade teacher was fresh out of college and didn't know anything about teaching nobody, and her classroom was a damn zoo. So I say again, I'm not signing no paper for no white man to test my kid and tell me something that I already know because of. I heard a Dr. Kumar lecture, and he said we shouldn't ask for a psyche valve unless we don't know what the problem is. I know what my son's problem is. He ain't been taught. Now, since you told me he need help, let's talk about that. You get Title I money from the federal government, don't you? Oh, uh, yes, I do. How do you spend it? Well, you know our Title I money is already spent up. Ah, uh, none of us been spent on my son. So because he's behind the read, guess what you're going to do, Miss Principal? 
You would have found my son a tutor, and they're going to tutor my son two days a week for 45 minutes a pop. That's what you're going to do. Thank you very much. You said he needed it, and you're going to give it to him, and he ain't going to get it in special aid. You're not going to make money off my son. You're going to take the money you already get and make it work for my boy. Next time you call me, I suggest you think, because I'm not one of those kind of black parents. Enjoy your day. Y'all see that? Give it back. Stop letting them tell you, flip it and give it back. Because I'm going to tell you right now, every school in America got a blacklist. You know what a blacklist is? That's a list of black parents who you know you cannot mess with. I'm telling you, I work for the schools. There's a blacklist, and everybody in here better be on it, because if you ain't on it, you ain't advocating enough for your child. Once you make the blacklist, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Somebody said, I want to get her tested. Why? I think she uh, might have a learning disability. Who her mom? Oh, hell no. I ain't call that lady. I'm telling you what they do. I'm telling you, if a kid is in special ed, and their parent name is on the blacklist, they will accommodate, they will over-accommodate you. When can you make it? We'll stay late. You want to come early? Would you like some coffee? Some tea? They know not to mess with you because you're quick to do what? Write a letter to the state. Get to that superintendent, that school board. Here's the thing. Stop trying to be friends with your students' teachers until you know they are friendly with your children. Because some of us are going to school making friends with teachers who don't care about your child. You have a job to do, and I got a job to do. Your job is to teach. My job is to raise my child. We should be on the same page. But if by chance we ain't, I'm going to have to hang in. So I'm not going to come smiling in your face. I'll start smiling once I know I know you can. Because guess what, good people? What's the number one predictor of academic success? Teacher expectations. Did y'all hear? Not money. This is what they do to black folks. They tell you the reason why black kids ain't learning. Because there ain't enough money in the school district. Y'all listening? The parents don't care. All the kids want to be basketball players. There's not enough certified teachers. The books are old. The school builders are crumbling down. Guess what? All that stuff is true. But guess what? Put them in a new building next year. Make sure every teacher is certified. Give them all the high-tech learning equipment. And guess what? They still won't learn a damn thing. Why? Because the people teaching them don't give a damn. Stop letting people manipulate you. The union wants you to think the reason why the kids ain't learning is because it ain't enough money. Why does the teacher union want you to do that? Because if they can do what? Manipulate the black community into fighting for more money, that benefits them. Now more teachers get hired. If you fall for the class size argument, y'all hear that, right? The reason why they're not learning because it's 30 kids. If I had 20, they would be learning. Don't get me wrong. The smaller the class size, the better. If the teacher is trying to teach, if the teacher ain't trying to teach, it could be two kids in there, and it ain't going to, y'all follow me? So your first job is to do what? Assess the teacher's concern for the kids. That's the first thing I do I go into. First thing I do, sometimes I have to tell the superintendent, all due respect, you ain't got one teacher in this building who care about these black kids. That's your problem. Well, we can't do anything about that, Mr. Johnson. I know. And as a result of that, these kids, they're going to never learn. Well, can't you help us come up with I'm telling you what you need to do. Get rid of the staff. Mm -hmm. Your problem is this. Well, they're union rep. That's how it go, y'all. It's just like that. It's just like that. And if you make too much noise, you get kicked out of school. So a lot of principals don't say nothing about their teachers. You ever see a principal be smiling on their face? Hey, you're like, that teacher don't even teach. Why he all buddy buddy with her? Because he want to keep his job. She's with the mafia. <laughs> She's with the mafia. Blood and blood up. So, a learning disability, eight types. There's eight types of specific learning disability. SLD in basic reading skill. SLD in reading fluency. SLD in reading comprehension. SLD in math calculations. Can a child add, subtract, divide, multiply? SLD in math reasoning. Can the child decide on the math operation and complete it? SLD, listening comprehension. Can the child understand what the teacher is saying? SLD and oral comprehension, oral expression. Can the child effectively articulate themselves? SLD and WE, which is written expression, writing and spelling. Okay? Most of us think our kids are dyslexic. Soon they begin to spell something backward. One time, you think they got a neurological problem. <laughs> Half the time, what? They ain't mastered the alphabet. And do me a favor, black parents. 
But you know, in the conscious community, we always want to homeschool our kids, right? Nothing wrong with homeschool. There's a, there's a black couple who has a book entitled How We Homeschool Our Sons to Harvard University. I'm all for homeschool. If you're going to homeschool, some of y'all take your kids out of school, only work with them one day a week talking about you homeschool. No, you mean you home with four. Are y'all with me? And what happens is you do what? The child gets to sixth grade, you decide it's time to stick them back in school. Problem is what? He ain't kept up on the curriculum. He's in the sixth grade functioning on the second. I had a kid like that. His mother was in a conscious community. You know what I told that lady? I said, this is really child abuse. I need to call your ass in. <laughs> I told her to her face. And I said, furthermore, you knew you shouldn't have been homeschooled. She said, why? Because you were involved in everything. How is Umar Johnson going to homeschool my daughter? With all I'm doing. There's no way I can do that. I got to be realistic. I'm not going to homeschool my daughter. I'm too busy. That was the situation with this woman. She had no business homeschool. You too busy. And she did it, and the child suffered. What's another way to get around that homeschooling situation? If we do what? Unify and do group homeschool. OK? Let's say we all in the same community, right? We all got the work to eat. So guess what? He got math Monday morning. I got history and language arts Monday afternoon. He worked the night shift, so he's going to be the gym and phys ed teacher on Tuesday. Feel me? You want to come in, you're going to do diet and nutrition. OK, we got the science teacher, we got the writing teacher. Everybody do a little piece in order to learn. But because we ain't got no unity, you got homeschooling parents doing what? Everything, burning themselves out. I'm teaching my kid from 8 to 3, and I got to work from 11 to 7. See, then I got to run here. We got to work together, y'all. If you work together, collectively homeschool, you can get it done. But please, 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 make sure everybody gets child abuse and criminal record, because molestation of black children is an all-time high. Y'all heard about the Penn State situation up in Pennsylvania where I'm at? Assistant coach molested little black boys. They didn't tell you that on the news. Black boys, from what I understand, all of them weren't black, but most of them were. And let me tell you how trifling he was. He started a program. Listen to this. He started a program to help dysfunctional and history kids. So he could do what? Molest them. But guess what? Bishop Eddie Long did the same damn thing. Bishop Eddie Long did the same thing. Used his God power mm -hmm. to molest boys. And guess what? Just like Bishop Eddie Long, Penn State coach, the whole staff covered for it. Mm -hmm. what, what really shocked me about the Bishop Eddie Long is that the women, the elder sisters in the church, turned a blind eye. Mm -hmm. Now when that happens, you know you're in trouble. You know why they turned a the blind eye? Because they was well paid. Penn State, same thing. They turned the blind eye. Oh, y'all scared me. I thought the FBI was in here. <laughs> <laughs> emotional disturbance, number three. I don't ever want to see no child diagnosed with emotional disturbance. You fight that. You get with me, you fight that. Once your son or daughter is diagnosed with emotional disturbance, nobody ever wants to teach them again. Soon when they see the label, it stigmatizes the teacher. Soon when they see that label, what do they want to do? Discipline school. That's all they want to do. Juvie Hall. You ever been to an emotional support class? I want you to go to an emotional support class in Goldsboro before the school year out. And you will see the only person who's emotionally disturbed is the teacher hiding under the damn desk. <laughs> the kids are swinging from the roof, riding bikes, cooking cakes. Ain't nobody learning nothing in the class. No academics whatsoever, unless you come across a really good, strong emotional support teacher. But most of the time, it's a woman, OK? And there's no slight against the sisters. But most of the kids are boys. So what you got a woman in there, fresh out of college, teaching 13 so-called emotionally disturbed boys. They're not really emotionally disturbed. they emotionally distraught, because half of them ain't had any fathers in their life. Yeah. Hearing impairment, you know what that is. Child might be deaf in one ear. Visual impairment, you know what that is. Kid might be legally blind. Speech and language, that's when the child does what? Stutters, have trouble articulating, OK? Or they can't understand language, assuming they know English. You can't take an African immigrant kid talking about his special ed with a speech impairment. He never been taught English. Because in Philadelphia, guess what they do with all the African immigrant children? We have a lot of immigrants from West Africa because of the war, Liberia, and places like that. Because they ain't got no Esau, English as a second language, you're supposed to teach them English. Some schools ain't got it, so that's what they do. Stick them in special ed. You came to America for a better life, and you got a worse one. 
See that? And the African immigrant parents don't know educational procedure at all. And when they go to the school, they really intimidate. You see how we bow down when we get in front of white folks? They really bow down. Because their whole thing is, I'm not even an American. You feel me? So I don't want to make nobody upset because they might put me back on the boat. Okay? And that's another reason why you will see a lot of African immigrant participation in the conscious community. Okay? Because they can be deported. All right? And the FBI will deport them in a minute. So what we got to do is we got to think strategically. For those of us who are Pan-African, it's like myself. You got to say, I know I can't have his brother on the front line because they'll kick him out. Me, they can't kick us nowhere. Because our ancestors built this. We ain't got to go nowhere. We was joking. <laughs> Y'all feel me? So they can't say you know. So what you do is you use them for whatever skill they can offer behind the scenes. Our problem is we want them to be in the front with us. Hey, brother, we are African. We're about to go march. He can't do that. He got a green card. Okay, and they're always looking for reasons to get rid of the Africans because they don't want them here anyway. You're Puerto Rican, you can come. You're Cuban, you can come. Haitian, Dominican, hell no! <laughs> see, they'll send them back. Y'all I mean, see the, the news? Haitian, no. Send him back. In fact, tell him we got a plane ticket for him. He can fly Southwest, US Air, United, but you're going back. Racism. Okay? Deafness, blindness, autism. Why so many black children diagnosed with autism? because we keep sticking immunizations in their arms. If you ain't read Curtis Call's books on vaccinations are dangerous, you need to read it. But did you know 50 years ago, there was hardly any black kids with autism? Did you notice that? We never had that. Why are we getting it now? Because they force the stuff in your arms. Bird flu, swine flu, H1N1. Who in the hell want to put that in your arm? Hispanics first, Negro first, and you put it in your arm. Listen to this. You want to hear something crazy? I'm going to read you the criteria for ADHD. Straight from the lab, straight from the criteria. This is what we use. Listen to this. I want you to see why every other black boy is being doped up with kitty crap. <clears throat> Fails to give close attention to detail. Has difficulty sustaining attention during play. Does not listen to when spoken to directly. Does not follow through on instructions. Has difficulty organizing tasks avoids, dislikes, or is reluctant to engage in tasks that require sustained mental effort, loses things necessary for tasks and activities, easily distracted, forgetful in daily activity, fidgets with his hands and feet, leaves his seat when he should remain seated, runs about and climbs excessively, has difficulty playing quietly, is often on the go, blurts out answers, has difficulty waiting for his turn, and interrupts other people. Do you know of an adult, child, anything living on earth who don't meet criteria for ADHD? <laughs> you, me, black. Do y'all see? This is garbage, y'all. Now here's the drug company influence. Why is the criteria so broad? Because the broader it is, the more people qualify, the more prescriptions get written. Y'all follow me? And the more money they make on Wall Street, people. You don't let your son or daughter get diagnosed with something that everybody can do. I'm glad when I was growing up, when I used to live here in North Carolina, the second and third grade, I'm glad this stuff wasn't out back then, because I would have been doped up. Because I was inattention, hyper, and I still am, but I made it fine. I, but no drugs. No drugs. But they got everybody thinking your son needs medication to get an ed education. So let me get this right. You locking up all these black men for selling narcotics on the street, but you're giving narcotics to their son. The same drugs under a different name, and nobody gets in trouble. If that isn't, how you gonna have a war on drugs? How you got a war on drugs where you pumping black boys full of chemicals all day long? Come on, black people. Come on, but oppositional defiant disorder. Let me read that nonsense. Where's that? Conduct disorder, where's ODD? Y'all need to get a copy of this book if you're a parent, especially with a son. Because somebody gonna come to you with some ADHD one day. And I want you to pull this book out and read those criteria that I gave you and say, I'm sorry, but my son ain't that. <laughs> DSO4, they're about to come out with a new one in 2013, 2012. They're considering video game addiction. 
together. And I know some of y'all saying, well, wait a minute. That's a bit much, ain't eh? it? I thought so too, until I started studying. And that's what we find. We find that the areas of the brain that are stimulated during crack cocaine use are also stimulated during video game play. So guess what happened? Now you see why Raheem had to get up to go to the bathroom. He don't want to eat. He don't even breathe. He stay in that bedroom all day, don't he? He's addicted to the video games. You know, black men, uh, some of us addicted to white women. Our kids addicted to the video games. <laughs> <laughs> I get to that old man. <laughs> Ain't nobody here married to a white woman, are you? Because <laughs> I was giving the lecture last week. Brother was in the back. You are wrong! <laughs> I've been married to my wife for 20 years, and it is not because I want to be white, it's because I love her. I said, can I ask you a question? I said, if black-white marriage is all about love, if black-white marriage is all about love, why is it that 98% of black men married to white women have power, property, status, and privilege that his wife doesn't. And if it's all about love, why can't I find one rich white woman married to a broke ass black man? Are y'all with me? Does anybody in here know a rich white woman married to a poor black man? So if it's about love, why does it never work the other way? Doesn't pure chance dictate that there got to be a couple of rich white women with poor black men? It's always rich black men. And then the brother said to me, I think you make too much of this interracial thing. Because when I'm out with mine, don't no white man give me no bad looks. They don't look me up and down. Don't no white women look at her and say, what are you doing? You're disgracing our race. People treat us like any other couple. So how do you explain that? I said, you Negro, let me tell you. The reason why no black men or white men or white women rebuke you for dating a white woman it's because the only ones you allow to date are the ones no other white man wanted in the first place. <laughs> you see? Then he was like, dang, I didn't know that. <laughs> and black women, y'all need to stop, because y'all over the television talking about you're going to start exploring your options. You're going to get your feelings hurt. OK? Listen to me. There's one relationship in America between black people and white people. And that's master slave. And even when you date a white man, you still a slave. And black man, even when you date a white woman, who really has the power in the relationship? At any moment, that white woman can pick up a phone call and change your whole life. She can have the police out there in the moment, and nobody would even take your story. You never give nobody that type of power over your life. Nilly Fuller, if you never read Nilly Fuller, the compensatory code book, you need to read his books. OK? Because he talks about power. And that's one thing we don't study, power relations. Power, you notice how when black people run into white people, the white people always smiling and shaking your hand. I understand why they smiling, they in charge. What the hell are you smiling at them for? You loose. Y'all you, follow me now? We gotta be smiling at what you smiling at him for? Talking about some kid we all get along. How the hell we gonna get along when y'all got 98% of the nation's wealth and I got less than 1%? Wait, how are we going to get along under that? The problem with the integrationists is what? All they deal with is social integration. You want to be an integrationist? Okay, let's become integration. Integrate the wealth. Integrate the capital. Integrate the political power. To have with the lunch counters and the buses, integrate the power. Are y'all with me? So the next time an integrationist come to you with that talk, okay, when we going to integrate the wealth? Now, if we're going to boycott and pick it for some wealth, integration, I'm all for it. Because guess what? Most of the wealth that these white folks are operating on was passed down into generation. They can talk about black people, you've been out of slavery for 144 years and y'all still poor, y'all still don't own nothing. How do you explain that? I said, first of all, if we run in a race and you was given a 75% head start over me, no matter how fast I run, you're gonna win. Just by virtue of me, you was put on the track. That's number one. Number two. The reason why we never catch up to white people is what? The banks don't give us access to capital so we can compete. Mm. Somebody in here got an idea for how you could do what? Topple Walmart. Somebody in here got an idea for how you can topple Microsoft. The problem is what? You ain't got the capital. 
It ain't no bank you can go to and say, look, I got an idea. I know I can take Walmart's black customer base from them and bring them to black market. But in order for me to do that, I need $5 million loan. What bank will give you $5 million loan? You can't compete with them. You can't compete with them. That's why we kept in the situation we're in, because we're not given access to capital. Korean come over, Chinese come over, German, Italian, Irish, Jew, they get access to capital. Access to capital. How are they gentrifying the black community right now? Where white folks getting all this money to do what? Take abandoned houses and flip them into $250,000 properties overnight. The banks. The same banks where we put our money. The same banks where we put our money is moving us out of our damn neighborhood. And then people are always talking about, why are you mad at white people? First of all, I ain't mad at nobody. I'm telling the truth of my situation. I try to be emotional because you can't win no war being emotional. But how is a white woman today responsible for slavery when she didn't live? Why do y'all keep talking about white people responsible for the enslavement of, our, of your ancestors? These white people wasn't born back in the 1800s, so why are you mad at them? I said, let me ask you a question. If your father had $5 million and he died today or tomorrow, who gets the money? You do. Did you work for it? Hell no. Did you help him build it? No. But you get the money. Why? Because you're all in the same family. It's called entitlement. Guess what? We all in the same family. And it's called entitlement. Y'all don't talk that stuff to nobody else. But y'all want to talk it to black people. The reason I hold white people accountable for slavery ain't because they participated in slavery, but they do what? They participate in the unfair distribution of the wealth that slavery created. Are y'all listening to me? That's why they're responsible. You didn't put my ancestors in chains, no. But the money that was made by my ancestors being in chains, you control. And you do nothing to give me the peace that I own. So yes, you're just as guilty as the bad practice within 300 years. Right. Next question. That's right. That's right. You got to take what the Europeans say, black people, and give it right back. Right. Every strength can be a weakness, and every weakness can be a strength. And most Europeans think that they are much more smarter than black folks. Right. There's nothing. Have you ever seen anything funnier than the Europeans being cornered by a brother or sister, breaking their ass down, <laughs> and they start having a white supremacy attack? <laughs> I think you're getting violent. <laughs> I said, let's go fight. We're dealing with your ideas. I was in a meeting with the teacher. We was talking about a little black boy. She wanted him on medicine. I said, ain't nothing wrong with this boy. Ain't nothing wrong with him. He don't need no drugs. You just don't know how to manage your class. She started having a white supremacy. <laughs> You're raising your voice. <coughs> I want you. And then the black men, they so in love with the white women. Now the white women think every black man wants you. Every time you go somewhere, some white women, they looking behind them. You ain't even got that. What is it? It ain't even flat. You go in. What do I want you for? Nothing cute about you. Get out there. Oh, I'm not in love with you. It's crazy. And I don't know what you're marrying them for anyway, because once they get about 60. Oh, yeah. Sisters, they got that melon. They can hold firm. So they 90 and 100. You get one of them, start bucking like a turkey. <laughs> Chin all three chains. <laughs> you bought that, you bought that. <laughs> Talking about something. Oh, yeah, they're they not worried about money like the sisters. The sisters want all your money. Oh, really? I know a handful of dudes who got children by the white women, and they bring them for every dollar they got. Ask OJ. He had to pay the family. And now he's in jail for stealing his own trophies. Can't we all get along? <laughs> with autism, sometimes people confuse autism with mental retardation. Autism is not mental retardation. A child can be autistic. Autism is a what? Communication impairment. What's some signs that you see a child is autistic? They like to do the same thing all day. They never get bored. Play the rubber band all day. Pencil erasers all day. Stuff that you and me would never even think of having fun with. They can have fun with it all day. Other children come over there to play with them, they act like they're not there. They're still playing. Children try to initiate conversation and play, they don't. They're normally silent, they're normally to themselves, and they also do what? Repetitive behavior. They hand flap, or they blink a lot, or they flick at the light a lot. Whenever you see a weird behavior, they could possibly be autism. Don't mean they're retarded. 
autism is a spectrum. You can be high autism, low autism. You can be Asperger's, which is basically a very small autistic kid who's bad as that, right? Don't assume retardation. A lot of our kids who are autistic are being put in the retarded classes because the school district ain't got no autistic support class. Be careful. I'm telling you what they're doing. This is what they say. We ain't got no autistic teachers, so guess what we're going to do? We're going to put them in a the class with the retarded kids. You must supervise your child's education. Now, what can you do if you're a special ed child? This is for the kids who are in special ed. We don't want them in, but if they in, if you can prove that the school district is not teaching your special ed child, you can make them pay for an approved private school. Did you hear what I said? It's the law, APS, Approved Private School. Let me give you an example. Your son is in the seventh grade. He's been in special ed since the third grade. He's been in special ed for four years, right? Winning in the third, now he's in the seventh. What grade is he reading on? Fourth, whole time. My son been in special ed for four years, and he only moved up one grade. <laughs> Guess what? He's being miseducated. I'm going to call the IEP meeting, because the job of the IEP team is to determine what? Program, what you're going to learn, placement, where you're going to learn it, and progress monitoring, making sure you benefit from the program. I'm going to call an IEP meeting and say, look, I don't agree with the placement. Goldsboro City Schools, none of them, none of them can teach my baby. I think it's time for y'all to pay for the approved private school. And when you go to the IEP meeting, already have an idea of the school that you want them to go to. You go to the State Department of Education website, download the list of approved private schools, go to their website, make a visit. So when you go to the IEP meeting, you can say, I've researched and I like this one, and I like this one. This one is $25,000 a year, this one is 30, I'll let y'all pick. <laughs> then they might say, no, we don't agree. We think we're doing a good job with your son. <clears throat> then you do what? Go right back to the State Department website, and you file due process complaint. Due process complaint. I'm making a complaint against the school district of Goldsboro, because my son is in the seventh grade, he's been a specialist since the third, and he still cannot read nowhere near grade level. I want to approve private school, and the principal and the other members of the IEP team are not agreeing with me. What are they going to do? They want to send a hearing officer down to the school district. They want to come into a room, regular room like this. You're going to argue why the school district should pay for a private school, and the school district's attorneys are going to argue for why they should. You don't need a lawyer. Most of this you can do by yourself. That's the good thing about special ed. You don't need a lawyer, okay? And then the hearing officer makes a decision. Now, most of the time, you're going to get what you want. Most of the time, the hearing officer is going to give you that approved private school, or they're going to give the school district one more chance to mess up, and you make sure you stay on. You stay right on the give one more chance so they mess up. Oh, you got it. Now, if they agree with the school, then you got to get a lawyer because now you're going above due process, and now you got to go to regular court. Okay, everybody got that right? <clears throat> Approved private school. ADHD. These are four words that I want you to, to remember. Adversely affects educational performance. For those of y'all taking notes, you want to write down AADP. Adversely affects educational performance. Let me tell you what this means. Let me flip back. You see these 13. I cannot diagnose any of these 13 in a child unless the problem adversely affects educational performance. Let me give you an example. What's your name, good brother? Me? Yes. Jim. Okay, let's take Jim. Uh, it's Jim. Shim. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Shim. You can have a seat, though. Thanks, brother. I like that, though. You serve him. He's strong, strong, positive young brother. I like that. Wasn't afraid, wasn't anxious. I like that. I want you to come to the Frederick Bellis and Marcus Garden School once you get over, okay? Okay, take Brother Shim. Brother Shim's teacher thinks he got a learning disability in math. So I go to the teacher and I say, can I see his report card? And I see his report card. And he got a C plus in math, but he's straight A's and everything else. So I say, why do you think he needs special ed? Because he got a C plus. And look at his scores and everywhere else, he got an A. Guess what I'm saying? He's not getting tested. And the teacher gonna say why. And I'm gonna say because that C plus does not represent to me an adverse effect on his education performance. Is he showing any signs that he's going to be failing? Nah, he's pretty much been a C all year. So that's just where he is. Maybe he need to work harder in math. But you know black kids are allergic to math. They break out in rashes. So he put out of math. You do know that, right? Only thing they don't break out when it comes to, to math is money. But you bring out a physics book, science book, calculus, algebra, they get hurt, hurt people, everything. Okay? I'm serious. I was testing a kid and he had an allergic reaction to the math test. Literally. 
Okay? So I want y'all to remember these four words. Because when somebody tells you your son needs special ed, you can say, well, there's no adverse effect. Yes, he's a C student. My son has always been a C student. And guess what? He's going to stay a C student in the regular class. I'm not going to put him in special ed, because if I put him in special ed, special ed is what? Legalized, inferior, and segregated education. Let me say it again. Special education is legalized, inferior, and separated education. Let's go back. Brown versus Board of Education, 1954. What did they say? You can't use race as a factor in education. You cannot take black kids and take them out of the class because they're black. But you can take them out of the class by saying what? They learn to disable. So all they did was switch the words. Special ed is nothing but the new Jim Crow black people. That's all it is. Remember, 54, Supreme Court says you got to integrate. What the Bull Connor said, we ain't integrating nothing. Segregation yesterday, segregation today, segregation tomorrow. 1963, Civil Rights Bill, Dr. King, the Kennedys, right? Lyndon Baines Johnson, they said what? You got to integrate the schools. White folks said we ain't integrating nothing. Segregation yesterday, segregation today, segregation tomorrow. 1974, look at this, y'all, every 10. They said we got to make sure they integrate these schools. Not because they care about black people, but it wasn't looking good in Vietnam for you to be having racistly segregated schools. Are y'all with me? So they said, what can we do to get white people to accept black kids? They said, we're going to do two things. We're going to let them resegregate. Tell them they can't say it's because they're black. You got to say it's because they LD, ED, SLD, DVD, whatever, right? And what else are we going to do? Tell them we're going to pay them. Tell them we're going to give them extra money for every black child they segregate all over you. Know? That's where the special ed money comes from. To do what? Influence white schools to accept our kids. And some of y'all make the bad decision of doing what? Moving to the suburbs, because you think Raheem going to get a better education in the boondocks. That's the worst thing you could have done. Now Raheem shows up in the suburbs with his pants sack. And everybody know he don't belong out there. <laughs> right? So guess what? You thought he was getting miseducated in the hood? Now, not only is he getting miseducated, he's being mistreated too. Are y'all with me? I deal with, I deal with uh, suburb cases all the time. I just moved out of here because I lived in North Philly and the schools were terrible, so I figured if I move out here to Lower Marion where Kobe Bryant went to school, you know, maybe he'd get a better education because after all, in Philadelphia, they only spend $9,000 on the kid. Out here in Lower Marion, they got the highest per, per pupil expenditure in the state, like $20,000 a kid. So how could he not get a better education? I'll tell you why, because they don't want him. Do y'all follow me on that? It's just that simple. Whenever he does something wrong, it's going to get blown out of proportion. Whenever he gets suspended, it's going to be suspended for extra days. The minute he fell a test, they're going to want to test him the same day. Special ed is used for segregation in a white district. It's used for what? Exploitation in a black. Are y'all with me? Because people always say, why they putting black kids in special ed in an all-black school? Your racial argument doesn't hold up, Dr. Umar. Because it ain't about race in the hood. It's about money, pimping the kids. That's what it's about. And you know what's so bad about the special ed money? Nobody supervises how it gets spent. So you mean to tell me he gets an extra $10,000? But guess where the $10,000 ends up at? New helmets for the football team. A new gym for the basketball team. Are y'all listening to me? That's right. You're like, where my son's special ed money? Did you see the new uniforms? Did you see the new uniform? These principals are using this money any way they want. You mean to tell me that I'm a special ed kid? I get twice as much money as everybody else, but I'm getting a worse education? How am I getting a worse education when I'm getting twice as much money? This is what I would do. Somebody tell me you want to put my kid in special ed? This is what you want to do. You want to buy him a computer for the house with the extra money. You want to pay for him to go to academic tutoring at a place that I'm going to choose. You're going to pay for him to go to summer camp. In other words, I'm spending the whole 10000 mm -hmm. If I'm not spending the whole 10000 get the hell out of my face. Y'all got to get with these schools. Get on the blacklist. If you ain't on the black, you get on the blacklist, you get whatever you want. They roll down for you. They lay down. Oh, my gosh, she's coming. They get it. Because <laughs> they know not to play with you. Okay? You don't need to go get no white advocate. You need an advocate for yourself. Here's another good, important thing about special ed. Two questions I got to answer when I test these children. 
Number one, do they have a disability? One of the 13. Number two, do they need special ed to learn? And some of you are saying, well, if they got a disability, shouldn't they automatically need special ed? No. If a child has a hearing impairment, she needs a hearing aid. With a hearing aid, she can learn in a regular class. Yes, she has a disability. No, she don't need special ed. Do y'all follow me? I had a case with a young lady in high school, right? She wants to go to special ed. You know why she want to go to special ed? Because she don't want to wear a hearing aid in a, in a regular class because the kids pick one. I said, she's not going to special ed because she don't look sexy enough. Okay? First of all, I'm not mad at the child. I'm mad at the mother because you got your daughter walking to class with two radios on her ear. Okay? I don't blame her. I'm not going to go to school looking like that either. What you need to do is get this small little invisible hearing aid that wrap around the ear and nobody can tell us this. Stop trying to be cheap. Because your daughter is not receiving a proper education. You got her going there with a cell phone taped on her ear. <laughs> okay, what type of crazy stuff is that? Now, let me tell you what teachers do. Teachers like to re re reverse the order of these questions. They like to ask number two first. Legally, you can't ask number two first. This is what they say. Don't you think your child would benefit from a smaller class? Don't you think your child would benefit from more one-on-one? -on -one? Don't you think your child would benefit from extra time? You say, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay. So in order for us to do that, we're going to need the school psychologist to test him and say that he has a disability and then he can get all that extra stuff. You see what they did? They reversed the question. They tried to pull that nonsense on me. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. The first question is do they have a disability? Don't tell me that he can benefit from a smaller class. Don't tell me he can benefit from one-on-one. -on -one. Why not? Because so could you. I could benefit from one-on-one -on -one in grad school. You could benefit from one-on-one. -on -one. Who in here wouldn't benefit from their own teacher? Who in here wouldn't benefit from a small class? So the fact he would benefit means nothing because who wouldn't? Okay? Stop letting people take your common sense, black folk. Never let nobody take your common sense. Okay. What I want to do is I want to stop there. I want to take some questions, and then I want to run through another presentation. It's 3.15. So what I want to do is take some questions and then we'll take a break to about 3.30, okay? And then I want to start up with, uh, I'm going to look and see. I may do a little bit of psychoacademic war, but I gave you a lot of that now. Or I might do uh, black male-female relationships or post-traumatic slavery disorder. I'll let y'all pick on that, okay? Post-traumatic slavery disorder or black male-female relationships, that's what we'll do next. But questions, any questions about this? Good brother. So when it comes to uh, ADHD, I yes. have a son that's on you know, ADHD, and he was clinically diagnosed up in Philadelphia to okay. have ADHD before I moved down to D.C. Okay. When I was, I was in D.C. school, I had, took him off for medication because I'm not for the medication. I was actually home at the time, able to help him out with you know, his homework, everything, and he improved. However, um, when we went to the IEP, I said I took him off medication. I basically had a problem with the school board, the teachers, and everything else. Where actually they call child protective services on my wife and I right. for taking the child off the of right. right. The first time he ever had any uh, incidents from smashing out of the wall or just getting mad or something. So how do you uh, protect yourself against the actual repercussions of you getting your child away from you know the medication and dealing with the board of education or the teachers trying to bring a backlash through that? Gotcha. First of all, and we can't go back in time, but just to highlight for the sake of everyone here, number one, I would have never told the school that he was prescribed medicine. I would have never told the school that he was evaluated and diagnosed with ADHD. Uh, I would have never done those things. That way, if they don't know, they can't use it. Okay, they do know. So what you want to do is get your psychiatrist or pediatrician to write you a note stating that this young man doesn't need drugs in order to function in school. If you get a letter from a doctor, there's nothing they can do. Now, he mentioned, you mentioned that your son was a special ed, he had an IP, which is special ed for ADHD. Everybody listen to me well. We got three boys and they all diagnosed with ADHD. Number one, number two, number three, they all got ADHD. One of them is going to get a 504 accommodation plan. One of them is going to get special ed IEP, and one of them is going to get nothing. Let me tell you how you decide whether or not your ADHD kid should be a special ed or not. ADHD kid one, 
remember, adverse effect on education and performance, right? Does the ADHD adversely affect his education and performance? In other words, is his grade struggling as a result of the ADHD? My son is a BC student. Does he show any signs of getting worse? Nah, he's been BC all year. There's no adverse effect. So special ed IEP is out. Everybody got it. He has ADHD, but he's doing fine in school. What you need an IEP for? You don't. So one of the things that you and I probably need to talk about later on is whether he needs an IEP at all. Okay? So kid number one, no special ed because he's doing fine. But, okay, so that's kid number one. But, kid number one has behaviors that are interfering with his ability to receive his education. His grades ain't struggling, but he's a badass kid. Are y'all with me? So guess what he's gonna get? Because he has ADHD, he has a disabling condition, he has a right to a Section 504 accommodation plan. I want y'all to hear what this is. Schools are not gonna tell you about this. If your son got ADHD, conduct disorder, opposition to fight, epilepsy, diabetes, anything, any medical problem that is not adversely affecting their education, which means they don't need special ed, they have a right to what's called a 504 accommodation plan. 504 accommodation plan. 504 accommodation plan. What is this? This is Americans with Disabilities Law. This is Civil Rights Law. Any American who has a disabling condition has a right to reasonable accommodations at their workplace for a child, this includes school, reasonable accommodations at the workplace in order for them to do their job. Let me give you an example. I work in this building. I'm up here trying to move something and I accidentally break my ankle, right? I have a disabling condition. So guess what? In order for me to do my job, I might need a ramp, okay? I might need access to certain keys to get it on the side door because I can't walk around to the front no more. Those are reasonable accommodations so I can do my job. Do I still have to do my job the same way? Yes! I'm still held to the same standard as all my coworkers, but my employer has to give me accommodations. I gotta take rid of the brakes too, because I gotta change my brakes. And ain't nothing you can do about it, because it's an accommodation that I have a right to by law. That's for anybody on your job. And that's stuff y'all need to know too, okay? Now, let's talk about child in school. Same thing, he got ADHD. He needs to take rid of the brakes. He got ADHD. He needs a one-to-one -one aid. He got ADHD. He needs to have a behavior plan hung up in the classroom. He got ADHD. He needs to meet with the school council on a regular basis. Y'all see that? Are we messing with his learning? Is he expected to not do what everybody else is doing? Same math, same science, same reading, same everything. But he has a right to accommodations. So we're going to give him extra time to take his test. We're going to give him regular breaks. We're going to give him a behavior plan. Y'all see that? Are we touching his reading goals? Are we touching his math? Are we touching his instruction? No. Special ed, we would. Special ed, you're going to say what? He's in fifth grade. He can't do fifth grade work. So we're going to modify his instruction. He's only expected to do fourth grade work. 504, uh-uh. You still won't do fifth grade work. But we have to give you accommodations to support it. Do y'all follow me? So, so we got a kid. No adverse effect, no IEP. But he got behaviors that are causing the problem. He gonna get a 504. Why have none of y'all heard of 504? Because the school doesn't get extra money when you do it. So they're not gonna tell you. Did you hear that? They always send you where? Special ed. <laughs> Special ed. You say 504, they say, how the hell do you know about that? Yeah. What are you talking about black friends about no 504? But see, now y'all know. Use it. This is what you do. Your best friend is a notepad and paper. Whenever the principal or teacher says something that makes your spiny senses tingle, you don't know if what they said was illegal, but it sounds like they said something they should have said. Mm -hmm. Put it in quotes, please. It's because you're going to use it to hang away. Are y'all with me? Let me give you an example of how you can get He needs somebody to sit with him. He can't function. He must. You're saying my son needs somebody to sit with him? Okay. <laughs> he has ADHD. Guess what that means? He has a right to reasonable accommodation. So y'all said he needs somebody to sit with him, guess who want to find it and pay for it? Y'all. Y'all see that? Use it against them. So now let's go to the third kid. So one kid, well actually this is the one, this is still the first kid, right? 
he gets reasonable accommodations. His ADHD is not affecting his learning. It is affecting his behavior. He get a 504, no special ed. Second kid, he ADHD, he's B's and F's. He's failed. He got to repeat. He got to go to summer school. The ADHD is clearly affecting his learning. Do y'all see that? There's an adverse effect. He gets special ed. Why? Because the ADHD is affecting his academic progress. If the ADHD ain't affecting his academic progress, no special ed. Let's take the third kid. He got ADHD. Is it affecting his grades? No. Is it affecting his behavior? No. You said, I don't know why he got diagnosed with ADHD. He's one of the best kids in my class. What does he get? Nothing. Y'all see that? Three boys, all ADHD. One gets a 504 because it's affecting his behavior but not his grades. One gets an IEP, it's affecting his grades. One gets nothing. The ADHD ain't affecting his grades or his behavior. Questions on that? Questions on that? If your son has a diagnosis, I don't want the labels. But if he got it, we're going to use it to protect him. Do y'all follow? Use it to protect him. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, what resources can we actually find educational policies for laws that's you know within our state counties or things like that's that? what you always want to do. You want to download the state special education code. Go to State Department of Education. You can also go to state government website, but it'd probably be easier on the State Department of Education website. Download the special education law, okay? Remember, we have a federal law, but every state is allowed to come up with their own regulations as long as they don't contradict the law. So what I gave you here, this is the federal law. So what you got today applies to everybody, but then the states have extra stuff that they add on top of that. You gotta find out what that is. But they can't circumvent the feds. They can't circumvent the feds. Now in your case, the question becomes, did your son ever need the IEP in the first place? Or did he just need a 504? That's the one thing that you kind of want to deal with. But then you get that doctor to write that letter, get DHS out of your, out of your uh, life. But here's the rule. When you get stopped by the cops, what do they tell you? Anything you say can and will be used against you. It's the same thing with a black boy in school. Anything you tell the school can and will be used against your son. Mothers, single mothers, you go there, <coughs> raising five kids by myself, I'm doing the best I can. I don't get no help from their father. You're looking for sympathy, but instead you're going to get in trouble because now they know that you're doing this by yourself. They know if they squeeze you enough, they can get you to do anything, including put yourself on drugs. Y'all see that? And then they'll start threatening you with child protective services. Uh, we think that you're having a difficult time raising those five kids by yourself. Uh, they're coming to school, they're not always clean. Uh, two of them, their grades are struggling. Your one son clearly needs meds. I think uh, we're going to need to call the city just to give you some support. And then the city come and run up on you and your kids. And they can't take the kids if you stop giving them medicine, which is why I don't want you to give them medicine at all. They call it medical neglect. You'll be able to beat your case, particularly if your son's grades are good. We can talk more. If he's not struggling academically, you'll be able to beat that in a minute. If he ain't struggling academically, okay, then it's purely a behavior modification issue. Let me tell you all a little secret. In fact, I might want to do that next. I might want to do that next. I have a presentation called Behavior Modification, How to Change Challenging Behavior in Children Without Medicine. If I like, we can do that one next. And we, I, I show you exactly what you need to do to change any behavior. You don't need drugs. So if you can change behavior without drugs, why so many kids on drugs? Because teachers don't feel like going through the motions. Some parents don't feel like going through the motions. A drug is instant. Boom! And then you get a Negro parent who says, what? Well, if my son didn't have ADHD, how do you explain the fact that the drug is working? <laughs> if I took you to the crack store, <laughs> okay, and you took a hit, would you not be affected by them drugs? <laughs> it's a chemical, dummy. Of course it's going to look like it's working. That doesn't mean he got anything wrong with him. He's high. <laughs> and for my mothers who might be nursing, stay away from the, uh, the breast formulas, the uh, Similac. Similac is made by Abbott Laboratories. Abbott Laboratories is a pharmaceutical company. They also make Depakote. What is Depakote? The most powerful antipsychotic drug in the market. Similac is made by the same company that makes the most powerful antipsychotic drug in the market. So, does that mean when your baby is crying after you already gave him 20 bottles of Similac? Why is he still crying? He ain't hungry. Stop feeding him. That's why he's looking overweight. He three months and he weighed 300 pounds. <laughs> Looked like the Michelin man. Okay, the black version. 
You know why he's crying? Because he's looking for his next fix. He's addicted to the chemicals in the damn white man's machine milk. Stop giving your children machine milk. You're putting them on liquid crack. And then they go from liquid crack to kitty crack. And then guess what happens when they turn 18 or 23 and your insurance runs out and they can no longer get the prescription? What are they going to do now to get high? The real. the real stuff. We are making drug addicts in our own community, starting from birth. You're supposed to put the breast in the baby's mouth. That's why God gave you that milk. The problem is we got better things to do, don't we? I can't be staying home, milking no babies. That hurts. He got a big head, Paul Robert. Look, that's your big head. Feed the baby. Okay? And sometimes women can't nurse. That's okay. But if you can't nurse, you can give them organic milk. There's all types of stuff. The whole food store's got organic milk. You don't give them Similac and Isomil. Okay? And if you want to give them Similac or Isomil, you do this. Write down all the ingredients on the label. Research every one. And you want to find that some of them ain't nothing but drugs. Mm. You see? The killers, black folk, we got to wake up and get up out of there. Question. What do y'all want? Post-traumatic slavery relationships or the behavior modification? Okay, let's do it. It is 3.30, 3.45, relationships.